Hi Vogue, I'm Michelle Zoner. I play in a band called Japanese Breakfast and I'm the author of Crying in H Mart and this is Seven Days, Seven Looks. So this is a classic Michelle look. The shirt is Moosekin, the jumper is Sandy Liang, the chain is Mara Peralta, and the boots are Prada. I don't know what happened, but I hit my 30s and suddenly wanted to start dressing like I attend boarding school. Maybe it's my attempt uh, to reclaim my fading youth, but I really like dressing this way now. It just feels like fun uniform. It feels sharp. It's a little edgy. Sandy Liang is one of my favorite designers in New York. This is like an everyday look for me. Shopping, dining with friends, classic. I love accessories that are, are playful and um, just love this little extra feather moment. <laughs> Pretty much when you go on tour, you live in one hoodie or jacket of choice. And this has been my new addition. Uh, I've never owned a fleece before, weirdly. I played a show at the Noguchi Museum and Sandy was there and rolled up with her two friends who were both wearing her signature fleeces. And I just thought they look so cozy and it was just something that I wanted to live in on tour. So this is my, my new favorite fleece. I think in order to be a classic item in my wardrobe, it has to have like a little bit of edge and tailoring. I have to wear like a comfortable fabric. I'm also very happy that I'm in this new period of my life where I can wear a thigh high boot and still feel casual. It feels like I am a, a grown woman. This is my after party look. It is full Simone Rocha, who I love and I feel like was really emblematic of the whole Jubilee album cycle. Something changed in me once I started Japanese Breakfast. I used to feel like I had to present super butch to be taken seriously as a musician. And now that I'm older, I just feel like I can express uh, my full femininity and, and still rock a stage. I love to wear like a big, dress at an after party because it's a instant talking piece and this kind of just makes me feel like a giant jigglypuff or like a high femme michelin man the first lyrics for uh the first song on the album paprika is lucidity came slowly i awoke from dreams of untying a great knot and unraveled like a braid and so i knew for this album cycle i was going to be wearing a lot of long braids because to me it, it sort of symbolized releasing tension and ushering in this new sort of era of joy. And a lot of the Simone Rocha shows have models with long braids in it. And I feel like it just, the style goes really well with her dresses and simultaneously they, they feel almost like soldier dresses, but also princess dresses in a way. It's a really interesting uh, tension between like masculine and feminine. And it's just so unique and creative. And I just, love her work so much. I like to be playful with my accessories and try to introduce uh, something with a little edge, a little punkier. So I put on this uh, Junia choker and these Respew scorpion earrings. The rings are much moi. They're super colorful and, and fun. On the feet are these giant Simone Rocha platforms. Gives me the height that I, that I need to feel powerful at an after party. This is what I would wear to a festival or a show. It's a Rodarte jumpsuit and Doc Martin boots. I actually wore this jumpsuit for our first late night performance on Jimmy Fallon. And afterwards, Kate and Laura Mulevi saw me in the jumpsuit and invited me to shoot for their pre-fall campaign in 2021, which was super fun. I love um, all of Rodarte's clothes. I think it's just so elegant and romantic. And um, they're the kind of clothes that I never imagined that I would get to wear and has been such a joy to get to know those two incredible designers and, and wear various looks over the years. Um, 
I first found out about Rodarte when I went to see one of my favorite musicians, Joanna Newsom, live in New York, and someone asked her what dress she was wearing, and she kind of coyly said, oh, custom Rodarte. And I just thought that was like such a sweet moment to be a, a musician and get to have a relationship with a designer, and I feel really lucky that I've gotten to know them over the years as well. And this is just like such a fun uh, festival look because I tend to like things that are short sleeved because I sweat a lot on like a hot stage. It's really shiny and it hits the lights really well, and uh, who doesn't love a sequin jumpsuit? It's also really easy to move around, which is really important when you're playing live and taking a guitar on and off and jumping around and um, it's breathable and, and comfortable and yeah, it's just the perfect festival concert look. So this is what I would wear to a reading for my author duties. This is head to toe Tom Brown. I feel like author Michelle is a little less extra than Japanese breakfast Michelle. And so I like to wear like a nice tailored kind of suit. I also feel like Tom Brown is the dress code for authors right now. It just makes you feel really sharp and professional. It's always very clean. Um, it's so iconic. I feel like this particular look is great for the spring, summer. It makes me feel kind of like Luke Wilson in the Royal Tannenbaums. I just need like a little tennis headband. So the earrings are dry powers. I wore a lot of dry powers uh, to the Grammys. They're really fun, colorful little rings. The only accessory I really want to talk about is my book, Crying in H Mart. I really love going on reading tours because as a musician, I'm so used to having to carry a lot of really heavy gear. A lot of the times I'll be carrying like 80 pound amplifiers upstairs. And so it's so nice to just get to go on a tour where all I have to do is carry this book and read from it. I wrote this book over the course of like five years. And the thing that really helped me was having really hard, fast rules. Um, and I find that it just helps us like an exercise in forgiveness of, of getting really great raw source material. So when my editor told me that they were looking for a book that was 80,000 words long, I decided that I would write a thousand words every day until I hit that word count. And it was a lot of really sloppy, like off the cuff writing, but I found that it was so helpful um, to look back on and edit because it really released a lot of um, things I wouldn't have if I didn't have those types of rules. And so I wrote this book a lot on tour, in vans, on planes, in between soundcheck and um, showtime. So this is my summer look. These sunglasses are gentle monster. I love these socks and uh, these Miu Miu shoes were a real splurge for me this year. They go with like every outfit and they're such a perfect summer shoe and I love them. The set is Mirror Palais. I feel like this is the perfect outfit to wear when running errands, out to lunch with friends. I would even probably wear this to a summer festival because it's really light and breathable and colorful and I love yellow. Yellow was like the major theme color of my album Jubilee and so I, I tend to wear a lot of uh, yellow when I perform. This is my red carpet look. Um, the dress is Valentino and the rings are Hirataka. I would pair this with my very special Chanel, classic Chanel purse. This was my mother's purse. My mom was such a huge fan of fashion and when she was alive, I was like such a tomboy and I was really um, kind of anti-fashion. Like in a way I felt like fashion, I think was almost anti-feminist and I didn't get it and I appreciate it so much more in my later life and I feel like my mom would be so proud to see me on the red carpet in a Valentino gown. So yeah, this is her coveted classic Chanel purse. She wanted one of these for a really long time and it just reminds me of my mom and all of her 
elegance and stylishness. Just like makes me really appreciate like good craftsmanship. I always wear this bag when I go to like a really important meeting or event. I wore this bag when I got my book deal and it just gives me power. It makes me feel like my mom is with me. I think my mom would be so proud. If she was alive, I would so love to get to buy her a designer purse in, in this period of my life where I you know, have enough money to, to buy her one. I feel like as an only daughter, that's like your dream is to gift your mom like a designer bag. And unfortunately I can't do that, but I like to carry her bag with me. And I, I think of her often and feel like I got so many great styling tips from my mom and, and she would be so delighted to, to see me playing dress up now. This is my tour look. I sleep in a bus, <laughs> in a moving bus and cart heavy gear in and out of buildings on tour. And so I have to be very comfortable. Comfort is key. This is my favorite shirt. I bought it in Seoul. I'm honestly like a big junk food fan and particularly Cheetos and hot Cheetos uh, are a favorite of mine. These are Calypsian pants, plaid pants, and these are Gucci slides. I'm lucky that I have pretty small feet because they're children's size. And so my friends bought them for me for Christmas because because they were cheaper. And then uh, this hat is, you know, signature J Brecky. This is a Japanese breakfast baseball cap. I became a hat guy over the course of the last few years. My mom would be very happy to know that I am blocking the, the sun from my face. And if I have a messy hair day, it's it's a perfect thing to, to throw on. I like uh, having a playfulness in my wardrobe. I think I really embraced color over the last few years. I used to kind of only dress like a stage hand in all black and, and wearing like a pop of color, like a yellow pant with an oversized um, snack brand tee expresses who I am. I'm just a goofy gal waiting to just have a good hang. <laughs> And that's what I wear in a week. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to do interpretive dance.